Tara, the floor is yours. Let's do what we got to do. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, a little background. I mean, I think a lot of you that are in here, I know personally, and you know my story, but Greg, I did invite. Um, so I was telling you about how we're now helping therapists who want to combine their love with travel. And we have Ooh, a large okay, chunk yes. of therapists that are actually becoming travel agents and creating like senior oh, companion yeah, love businesses it. and yeah, so yeah, yeah. So I invited, yeah, love it. I invited a bunch of those people okay. um, because they're going to be building online businesses with travel and so forth. So we might have some okay. of those. So if you guys are in here and are doing the travel side, let us know if you're in here doing like mobile hybrid practice or online businesses, let us know what you're doing or what you want to do. So Greg has a little bit of an idea <laughs> about that. But anyways, what I was first going to get to is Greg and I met in 2019. I went to mm -hmm. his SSPT live is what it was called then. No idea. Anyone there um, took my family down to Florida and um, and just got inspired and crazy and started the next level occupational therapy. So I always say he's literally the spark that started this all. Um, so I signed, <laughs> I signed up for his $30,000 mastermind course. And I did ask yep. my husband first, he was like, okay. <laughs> 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 but we gotta anyway. talk about that. We should talk about that. That's really important. But okay, you continue yeah. and then and yep. then we'll chat. Then we'll chat. Um, so and then again, just throughout since then, um, I was in his mastermind program and other different things, and things have just gone crazy yep. ever since meeting Greg. So um, I'm excited to have him here. We said that we were gonna really talk about why we need to change our perspective, Greg's upcoming. Um, five day challenge, which you have to use my link because I told him I was going to win and I'm not winning. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, listen, 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 y'all sign up. And, and if you love Kara, if you love her, <laughs> sign up for VIP. Okay. Just sign up for VIP. This is not for me. Okay. This is not for, this is for Kara. Okay. Because she's very competitive and she wants to win and you know, she wants to just y'all Look, man, if she's ever giving you value, just just drop the money, okay, and, and sign up with her. I mean, seriously, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get them to start this. at the free version. But anyways, I oh, check my gosh. I check my leaderboard stats every day, and I'm now third. Whatever. <laughs> anyways, um, uh, but yes. that's another re. I mean, with I never knew what an affiliate was before meeting Greg. I never really knew online businesses. Oh, I remember starting Kajabi. I was about, I can just sit there in August thinking I am going to throw this, my dang <laughs> computer at the window because I have no idea what any of this is. So it has been, yeah, a crazy growth period over the last several years. So I can't believe it's yeah. already been how many years? 2019, 20 Four years now. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So my family has all met Greg. So his younger son and William are around the same age. And then your daughter in college is the same age as Jada. So, yep. Um, yep. so yeah. So basically I'll let Greg kind of give a little spiel and we'll talk about why we need to change our perspective and think outside of traditional therapy. Um, talk a little bit about what's going on next week, but if you guys have any specific questions, put them in the chat as well. So yeah, yeah. So, so let, yeah, let's do that. Um, and yeah, give a background because some Kara. people might, again, I think most people in my world know who you are, but some people mm -hmm. might not. So it'd be good to give okay. a little background too. Okay. So, you know, I think that's the first thing because honestly, just by my subconscious is just to serve you. Okay. So the way that my brain works is that anytime I hear something, I'm trying to figure out a lesson in it. My mom said, I've done that since I was like eight years old. Okay. It's, it's my proclivity. Um, I have this ability to like create analogies from everything, you know, and, and I say that because I believe that God has given that to all of us, whatever you believe in. But I truly believe that every single one of us have this unique gift. I don't know what your gift is, but that's mine. And I've used that to be able to teach people 
things that they think are complicated and teach it in very simple terms. And that's how I've been able to create a lot of impact for people. So anyways, with that said, um, I'm always going to assume that no one knows me. I want all of you to understand that as well. Always assume that no one has ever heard of you. And if you look at things that way, what will happen is you will actually get really, really good at your message. Okay. One of the things that one of my coaches said to me is, Greg, you say the same thing, but constantly focus on saying it to new people, not trying to create new things and saying it to the old people, because you know what? The old people eventually get tired. Of you. Okay. Say the same thing over and over and over again and say it to new people, find new people to say it to. So with that said, I'm Greg Todd, and I uh, have been a physical therapist by trade for the last 23 years, okay? Um, I am the anti-entrepreneur. I am the person that became a physical therapist because I didn't want to be like my father. My father is actually in, um, in insurance. He works for a company called Primerica. He's been with them since 1984. 83 um 84 and and basically my father worked for himself and i saw his income go up he was the first person ever in the todd family to be able to make a hundred thousand dollars a year i've also saw his income go down and when his income went down him and my mom started having marital problems serious marital problems and i always equated marital problems to entrepreneurship and being in business for yourself. And so I said, I would never do that. Fast forward, I become a physical therapist, which at that time, just like many of you, OTs, PTs, da, 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 da. During that time, physical therapy was so in demand. And I was like, I'm going to do this because this is going to be the job that is going to keep me the safest. And so I become a physical therapist. I graduate from Florida International University in 2000. Four years into me being a physical therapist, guess whose marriage was on the rocks? This guy. Guess why? Because I couldn't give my wife time. Like many of you, I was treating patients day and night. I was working from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at a corporate outpatient place. After work, during a few different times of the year, actually this time of the year, tennis players on the professional tennis circuit are in America. They're actually participating right now at an event or they're going to be participating at an event in an uh, area called Indian Wells in California. And then they come to Florida after that. And I would work with tennis players sometimes from 8 p.m. to midnight. So I was working 16 hours throughout most days at three different times of the year. And I would come home after a really, really crazy long day, and my wife would have talked to me. Why? Because I wasn't giving her my time. She was pregnant with our second child, who is now 17 years old, and, um, and it was very frustrating. And I remember it all culminated where we weren't talking with each other for about five or six days. And then it was a Saturday, the first time I was home where she saw me, and it just exploded, and it was not fun, and I broke down. And I broke down crying and realized that I had to do something or I was going to lose the marriage. You guys, I couldn't win the time game. So the reason why I say that's so important is because on that next Monday, I decided to play the time game. Not the money game, the time game. And so I went to my boss and I said to my boss, his name is Al. I said, Al, I need to, um, to work four days a week. I'm willing, you're, you guys are paying me salary. I was making like 68K a year. I said, I need to go down to a four-day week. What I would like is I like Wednesdays off. You guys are paying me salary for 40 hours anyways. I will work 12 fours, okay? I'll work, I'm sorry, four 12s, okay? That's what I'll work. So I'll work 48 hours for your 40 hours. And he said, uh, Greg, I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. He said, I'll check with our, our regional. He got back to me later that day and he said, we can't do that. And the next day I put in my notice. I had no job, I had nothing lined up. I just knew that I couldn't do that. And I went on my own. And I basically borrowed money. I took a home, home equity line on my house, 180,000. And uh, I started the process of opening up my own practice. And so now today, that one investment 
has gone on to make me over $30 million. Now, today is a little bit different. Today's a little bit different. Today, there are so many ways to be able to go out on your own and win the time game. And here's what I know about playing the time game, you guys. What I know about playing the time game is that if you play the time game, you can potentially win your time back, but you always win money. If you play the money game, you can only win money and you are probably not gonna win your time. So what I believe is I believe the reason why I am an immigrant kid that came from nothing that had his first job as a PT making $19 an hour full time, having a dream of 10 years out of PT school if I could ever make $50,000 to today being able to have days where I've made $50,000 is that I made a commitment to playing the time game. And I think what many of you are doing right now is you're actually making a commitment to Try to explore the time game. So I want you to congratulate yourself for actually doing that. Now, you might be doing it in different ways, whether you're doing the travel thing, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're, you're trying to you know, create a practice, you're trying to grow your practice. Look, I want you all to play the time game. That's it. Where I want you to understand this. It is easier to make a lot of money in a shortened period of time than it is to make very little money over a long period of time. I know that sounds weird, but it is reality, it is the truth. But in order for that to happen, you must create and build a vehicle. And I call it the 168 vehicle. Does everybody understand what a 168 vehicle is? Put it in the chat. I'm assuming you guys don't know. Okay, so I guess <laughs> I need to explain it. Okay, so a 168 vehicle is a vehicle that I was never taught in college. In college, I was taught how to be a staff physical therapist. Some of you were taught to be a staff occupational therapist. And you were taught a 40 vehicle. And so you were taught how to trade your time for money, learning occupational therapy skills, physical therapy skills, if you have any PTs on, and you are taught how to trade your time for money physically being in front of somebody. And that typically works on a 40 to 50 hour work week. You make money when you are in front of somebody because that's the value you bring to the marketplace. The reason why today I'm able to work a quarter of the time that I used to work and make 250 times more than I used to make is because I have decided to build 168 vehicles. So here's what a 168 vehicle is. A 168 vehicle is understanding that there's 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. So the vehicles that I have built, I'm able to serve people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, this equals 168. So when I wake up in the morning, I usually have made more money that I used to make in a week working in the 40 vehicle that I built. The 40 vehicle that I built took me seven years, four years of undergrad, three years of grad school, and I built a 40 vehicle. But the 168 is really cool because the 168, if somebody is up in the middle of the night and they're frustrated, with not having help in their business and they need help. Well, I have this 168 vehicle called Smart Virtual Staff where they can actually purchase a package from my team. And we actually have people that are working 24 hours a day, meaning that one group works at this time, one group works at that time, and it's a 168 vehicle. So people can get help at any time. Okay, now, I, that's a pretty big you know, company. All right, let's forget about that. Let's talk about what you can do. All right, I have another 168 vehicle. 168 vehicle is a product. I've taken the knowledge that I have in my head. It's just, it's just one thing. It's just how I do my normal day. So it's my planner and it's a product. And it's just basically how Greg Todd organizes his day and what things I focus on to make sure that I'm doing 
the proper activities that's going to move me forward and keep me disciplined as an entrepreneur, but somebody that also wants to spend a lot of time with his family. So I created a journal. And that journal people buy through the 168 vehicle. Many of you are so gifted and you have so much knowledge from your time and your experience as an occupational therapist. So you have the ability to create something called an info product where you can actually take the information that you have and you can serve people with it. That's one thing Kara has done brilliantly. That's not the only thing she's done. She's done many, many things, but you can do that. And someone, what if someone wants to learn at 1 a.m. in the morning? What if someone lives in North Dakota or South Dakota, like this one over here? Okay, like it doesn't matter because it's a 168 vehicle. Are you guys following me? So with a 168 vehicle, all I have to do is make $11 an hour in order for you to make $100,000 a year. With a 168 vehicle, all I have to do is make $100 an hour in order for you to make a million dollars a year. So I've created three current 168 vehicles and two 168 vehicles that make six figures. Three that make seven, two that make six. And it's simply understanding that you have to be mindful of what it is that you're building. So here's the big point I want you all to take away from what I just told you. And then at this point, I can just, listen, I can go all night or I can just answer questions for you and just serve you. I want you guys to understand this. I want you to understand that it's extremely important for you to audit what the heck you're actually building. And you should never build something that is going to take as much energy to build it as it will to operate it. Did you guys follow what I just said? You want to make sure that you are going to build something that is going to take very little energy to operate it because it takes a lot of energy to build anything. I'm gonna give you guys an example. I just built a home. I built a home uh, in North Georgia, okay? Um, and, and by the way, if you wanna know a little bit about me, I'm a nature boy, okay? <laughs> I know I can get excited about this and stuff like that, but I'm like, when it's, I just need, I need to breathe in the, the salt water, I need to be around the mountains, you know, I mean, I don't want no bear to attack me, but like, you know, the deer, I just, y'all, you know, like, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I'm a nature boy. I'm a nature boy. Okay. I need to be outside. I love that. And so I love to be around nature and we built a home. Okay. Now we had some options. We could have bought an existing home, but we decided, you know, we wanted to build. Okay. Now building is brutal. Okay. I don't know. Have any of y'all built a home? Please put in the chat section if you have. Okay. It's a, like, this is like the, this is the third time we've done it. It's just like, just, we can't learn. We're just very stubborn people. All right. But it's freaking brutal. Okay. But one of the cool things about building a home is that once it's done, do you guys really worry about any like maintenance, too much maintenance and upkeep? I mean, I mean isn't building a brand new home it's not too much upkeep, at least in the first like three to five years. It's, it's very rare that something, something like epically goes wrong, right? Conversely, if, if you go and you get, you know, one of these, you know, um, uh, homes that are 70, 80 years old, I mean, you kind of know that the upkeep's going to be there a heck of a lot more. You guys, that's the example that I want you to understand. I want you to understand that you've got to be very mindful of what it is that you're building. Are you building something that is not gonna get you from your point A to point B fast? Or are you building something that, yeah, it might take time and it might be something that you haven't built before, but when you build it, it's gonna take you from point A to point B extremely quick. It is all based on the vehicle. Are you building shoes? Are you building flippers? Or are you building a car or are you building a jet? That's what you have to ask yourself. If it's going to be work 
just build something that once it's finished to operate it, to go from point A to point B, you can go a heck of a lot faster and it doesn't take a lot of energy. And that's what I'm gonna be teaching on the Invincible Challenge. I believe there's three business models that allow you to do that. I believe that you can add these business models to whatever business you're currently doing right now. Or if you don't have a business, you can actually say, I'm going to start with this. In all of those business models, there are certain things that you must do in order for the business to operate. Okay. And so should I tell them what the business models are? Should I? I? All right. Why not? So the business models are understanding that you must create the 168. So the business model has to be able to take money from people and serve people 168 hours a week. That's number one. The business model should have some type of recurring revenue. Why? Because if you go back to the biblical days, the Jeff Bezos of the Bible told us, this is how I maintain and gain my wealth. That was King Solomon, by the way, okay? And what King Solomon did is King Solomon served his contemporaries and he served them with what he knew that they didn't know. And he served them on stages year after year after year. And he made them pay him year after year after year. And if you look at any super successful business, they have made the business operate to where they are not making people pay them one time, but they're making people pay them over and over and over again, which means that you have to create value that people will want to pay you over and over and over and over again. This new opportunity that Kara's talking about the travel, I guarantee you, it has people paying over and over and over and over again. You ain't gonna travel one time. You're gonna travel all the time. Who the heck wants to go on one trip? <laughs> like, what the what? I ain't signing up for that. If it's one trip, but if, hey, man, if it's, if it's, hey, it's when I want, okay, yo, I'm all in, baby. All right, so you guys got to understand that. So that's number two. It must be a recurring revenue model. Here's number three. Number three is understanding that you must operate in the current era of wealth that we are in. This is extremely important for you all to understand. Okay, you must operate in a current era of wealth. So what era of wealth are we in? Does everybody understand? Does everybody know what that is? Let me see if anybody knows what that is. They can put it in the chat section. Let me see. You, you just never know. You never know. People might be on it. I'd have to pull out um, my booklet that you taught us everything to make sure I did the right ones. Okay, <laughs> I, think you, I think you have. I think that's why you make good money. Okay, all right, okay. All right, okay. She's a good student, y'all. She's a good student. All right. So here's the deal. The deal is, is that there are different times throughout the history of man that the way that people got wealthy, um, it was basically certain ways at certain times, okay? And so I, I won't go through all of them, but what I will do is I'll start from the 1950s. From the 1950s, the way that people got wealthy is through distribution. So before the 1950s, it was the industrial age. That's machinery. So if you were in a family that was creating machines during that time, that's when machines took off. By the way, forget, I'll just tell you. Before that, it was the agriculture, okay? So basically, if you were born into a family that had land, you were rich. If you weren't, you were either working for that family to live on the land, or you were a slave. That's the way that it was. So if your family was it, you got wealth. Thing is that that sucks for me and you because if we weren't born into it, then we'd just be poor, okay? Industrial, maybe you had a little bit bigger chance if you had access to money, you can make machinery, you got rich there, okay. Now the distribution. Distribution is where we are now creating so much stuff that now they have to be able to distribute it faster. Every single era preceded the era before it, okay? That's how it works. You have a problem, it creates a set of new ones, okay? All right, 
So when was occupational therapy? When did it blow up? When did it explode? Exploded between the 1950s and 1970s. Guys, wouldn't you say that occupational therapists, physical therapists, that the way that we learn, like, hey, by the way, can you all do me a favor? Can you put your years of experience? This is very interesting. Okay, you're going to see something really like wild here. The other day I was asking a group of students, what are you guys learning in school right now? And Bobby, can I tell you something? Uh, Bobby Hennig. So can I tell you something? They're learning the same stuff we learned. It hasn't changed. So Kelton has been a therapist for two years. Amy has been a therapist for nine years. Pam has been a therapist for 13 years. Jen might be beating all of us. No, I think, Bob, I think, I think Bobby's in the lead right now, okay, at 27. And can I tell you guys something? The way that we learned and the way that we currently operate is from the, is from the distribution era. <laughs> it's from the 1950s, 1970s. It's just the way that we do it. By the way, if you had centers, outpatient centers, whatnot, during that time, like you became wealthy. Here's the problem. It's no longer the 1950s and 1970s. Now, I want to quickly shoot through these other eras of wealth that came after that. After that, it was called the technology age. That is the billionaire babies. That's Steve Jobs. That's Michael Dell. That's um, um, Bill Gates. And then after that, it was the information era. Information was readily available, but information, we would get that through the Encyclopedia Britannica dudes that would come to your house and and tell you those, those like the whole the, the whole library of it, right? Okay. Well, we didn't need that anymore. Now we had these things called Google and Netscape and 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 AOL, right? We had information that we got online. Okay. And then after that, it was the entertainment education. This is now the Justin Bieber era. This is where you can actually go onto your phone. It's where they had these things called Vine. You guys, this is the way that I make a lot of my money today. It's that I have something just like you have something, but I've learned how to take that and how to apply it and apply it in a way that is relevant for people today. Guys, this is, this is part of what I've done. And by the way, that's not even the era that everybody can make wealth in today. That was the era of like 2008 but it still works better than the distribution era of 1950 that everybody else is doing every single day. The way that people are making the biggest amount of money right now, there are 22 million millionaires in America right now. 22 million. By 2026, that number is going to double. Wow. What? 90% of the millionaires that are in America right now are first generation. I am an immigrant. I am from Jamaica. I wasn't even born in this country. We are first, we are one of the 90% of 22 million millionaires in America right now. How are they making their money? They're making their money through partnerships. So when you see what is happening right now in this group, by the way, are you guys finding value with what I'm giving so far? Let me know. I love compliments, but I also love criticism because I want to get better, baby. Okay. So you found value. Guess why you got that value? It's because of Sarah Welke. Let's give it up for Sarah. This is called the era of partnerships. Partnerships work like this. Tara serves a group of people. She serves them and she serves them well. Tara's job every single day is to say, how can I serve my people better? So what Kara does is she just focuses on you all. She listens to you. She talks to you. She hears your griping in the groups. She deals with all of it. And she finds out what do my people need? Now, does Kara have to know everything? No. She doesn't have to know everything, you guys. But here's what Kara does, and she does very well. She says, who knows what I don't know? 
Who's an expert at that? By the way, am I an expert at what she does? Has she how she built her practice and she got all these employees and she's doing all some Medicaid. Y'all, she brings in Tony Mer Mercado to do his thing. She brings in Mike Chua to do his thing. He, she brings in Alex Engar. She brings in Chad Koontz. She brings in this one. She brings in that one. You guys, she's the queen of partnerships. She's the queen of partnerships. And when something works for her, she just says, you know something? I'm going to share it with my people because I love them. It's called partnerships. And we were trained as therapists that whatever we want to do for our clients, we got to learn. That's why so many of us are so tired. Why so many of us are burned out. By the way, I used to be that person too. I got so many certifications. And anytime somebody wanted something new, I felt this burden that I had to go and learn that thing. And then I had to go deliver it to them. You guys, it ended up leaving me with so many autoimmune issues. I actually had three seizures in four days in 2011. I've worked myself to the ground. And it wasn't until I hit rock bottom and I was about to lose my clinics that I said, I need to change. And it was that time that I went on this journey of just like trying to figure this out. By the way, you know, my clinics were doing quite well, probably like right around 900,000 a year. I think it was 2011, the, the end of the calendar year, 2000 was my first ever million dollar year in my business. I was, I was dying, man. I was dying. And it's because I was working in the wrong era of wealth. So guys, that's what I'm going to teach in Invincible Challenge. For those that want to learn it, you want to learn one of those models that I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach it to you. I'm going to tell you this is what you need to do. If you're like, oh, I tried a course already. You just did it wrong. <laughs> you just did it wrong. It's okay. People do it wrong. But there, there are nuances to it. And there's things that you have to understand. And you must understand um, those things. And you must be able to execute it out. So that's what I want to do over the five days. Um, and and here's what I'm hoping. I'll, I'll tell you all right now. I'll tell you that I'm hoping that at the end of the five days, you guys are going to be so mind blown that you're going to want to come to my event. And I'm going to give you an offer to come to my event. You don't have to come, but probably in your best interest to come because Kara came and she came. She didn't even understand what a damn Facebook group was. <laughs> she did it. You guys, I had no idea who this lady was. I just remember it was after I did my offer. I think it was that evening we had a dance party. I was pretty tired. I remember and she came up to me. She's like, ah, you don't know who I am. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah. I just signed up for your $30,000 program. I'm like, okay, well, thanks. Thanks for the money, I guess. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is what I want to do. I think I can create a Facebook group. Let, so, so let me tell you why I wanted to talk about this. I want to talk about this because you guys, here's the deal. She took action. You want to know she took action? Cause she just paid me 30 K. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get my money back. She got her money back. She got her money back in then some. She did very well, okay? You guys, by the way, she made, in her first year, she made an uh, occupational therapist salary and more from just being in the right era of wealth. She made like, like $80,000 just by pushing products that she was using that she loved from me. So when I tell you that it's much easier to make a lot of money over a short period of time than it is to make very little money over a long period of time, uh, that's my life. My first W-2 job was $3.25 an hour working at this place called TJ Maxx. For some reason, when y'all go to Macy's, y'all are just nice and you put the clothes all back, you go to the bathroom, you pee inside the little, the little ring, but when you go to TJ Maxx, y'all nasty. And I was the janitor at TJ Maxx, and y'all are nasty. <laughs> and I made $3.25 an hour, and they took taxes from that, y'all. It was like a $55 paycheck a week, and I had to clean up Binky. But when I tell you that I've made a million dollars in a day, it is much easier to make a lot of money over a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. And I feel very passionate about it because I still smell it. <laughs> Five years later. Bless it. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. There's probably people just leaving right now. Like, I can't deal with this guy. I can't. But listen, hey, this is one of the things that you must understand is that when you are unapologetically yourself, you will create 
the most raving fans there are out there. You will also have people that are just like, I just can't live in. Okay. But it's so less energy. It doesn't take much energy because this is me. I'm just like, I'm the guy that in the morning, which I'm quiet as can be. And I'm just here sniffing the salt. And then around, I don't know, or eight o'clock when I start talking about business and this stuff, I go crazy. You know, I don't know if I've and ever some seen people love quiet. it and some people don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> you, well, you just, you just have, you have, <laughs> Hey, remember when we were in a pool that time in Jamaica? I think I was pretty quiet. I think like hubby was there. That's because the rest of us were playing an intense game of volleyball or whatever <laughs> or something. I don't even remember what we were playing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good. It was good stuff. It was good stuff. It was good stuff. So you guys, that's really it. So anyways, with that said, I got 20 more minutes. Um, so I would love to answer any questions for you all and just serve you. Um, and I would stay here, honestly, for an hour and a half. I would. I have a, another interview with somebody at, at um, um, in 20 minutes. But let uh, come on. Let's bring the questions. Y'all come on. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ask your questions, everyone. Hey, Greg, my mom, Julie, is on watching. Mom, you did such a good job with, oh my God. Mom, you must be so proud, mama. You must be so proud. <laughs> proud of, you, you know something, what's so amazing is that, is that um, you know, we don't realize what we're doing when we're doing it, right? Now, I'm sure Carol, well, maybe she was perfect. I don't know, but mom, was she? Was I perfect, Question. mom? Can you hear us? <laughs> I, I, I have a funny feeling that Kara was a pretty responsible kid, but she was also a pistol, kind of stubborn. That, <laughs> that's, that's just my, that's my prediction. I don't know. But you know what? Mom, mom is, mom's got to be really, really proud. And the truth is, is that mom didn't know that her daughter would be doing what she's doing today and helping the amount of people that she's helped. You guys, can you do me a favor in the chat section? Can you all tell me if Kara Welke has impacted your life in an extremely positive way? Just put extreme in the chat section, okay? Put extreme, right? And, you know, this is the thing. It's like, I think, I think if you all understood that, that you don't know who you're helping and serving and what they're going to do and the ripple effect that it's going to create, like, you just don't know. You, you don't know. You don't know. You don't, like, my, my, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Hawks, was one of the first people ever. She was so tough on me. Mrs. Hawks was, like, six foot three. She was, like, six foot three, six foot four. You guys, I'm short, okay? I'm a short dude. Y'all, I, 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 was, I was scared of Mrs. Hawks. I just thought Mrs. Hawks was going to, like, one day just take me and just put me in a garbage can and just... Say like, and then they go, where's Greg Todd? Where is he? It's like, it's just, and I just incinerate in a garbage can. Yes, but one day Mrs. Hawks told me that, you know what, son? You know what, son? When you apply yourself, you're smart. It's the first time anybody ever told me I was smart. Now, she did put a little caveat on it. When you apply yourself, I want to tell you something. That one thing that lady said, has stuck with me till this day that if Greg Todd applies himself, he can be smart. It's amazing just the little things that somebody can say to you, somebody can do for you, and how it can change that person's life. And then it goes on to change somebody else's life. It's amazing. So just remember that, you all. Remember that you have the ability to do that. So operate in the world. And try to serve as many people as you possibly can. Now, if you're like, yeah, but when I serve the people, Greg, I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. Okay, then you're serving them wrong. Remember that. Okay. Greg, All we right. got our first question. Yes. Um. Is my yeah okay? Is my my business venture beyond just therapy products? Um. So I have five. So I have uh, three physical therapy clinics. That's one. That is not a 168 vehicle. That is a 40 vehicle. That does bring in over a million dollars a year, but that takes a lot of bandwidth and a lot of people. That's one. Number two, I have a virtual staffing agency. 
that is a 168 vehicle because of the way that we have it operated. That does take a lot more staff. That takes staff, that takes dealing with people. Um, it's very rewarding dealing with people, but people are people. Okay, all right. You hire them, you fire them, you love them, they hate you. Da, 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 da. Okay, all right. Luckily, that one is overseas, so I'm not having to deal with the day-to-day -day operations. I just I just cut the checks, okay? And then when things really go bad, then they call me, all right? Okay, number three is I have a consulting business. Do I have people? Yes, but I gotta be honest with you. With the way that technology is today, I have a very small team, a team of five. And that makes what those two businesses make combined with a 10th of the people. Number four is I have a software company. That software company is a HIPAA compliant software that I white labeled for healthcare professionals that does marketing, sales, courses, and everything under the umbrella of what you need to run an online business. That takes one live person and two support virtual staff. And it makes more than those first two companies combined. And then the fifth one is now I have vacation rentals. And I open up my first one this year in another state. And I have another one that's going to be finished building um, in hopefully four months. So that's what I have. And I have different businesses and I have different ventures. Now, for those of you doing the travel thing, I want you to I'm, I'm understand this. One of my first businesses that I made six figures in, and I was making about $12,000 a month, was working with a company called Beachbody. This is also the partnership era. That's what you're working in, okay? Um, and with Beachbody, many of you know P90X, T25, 21 Day Fix, Pio, those types of things, okay? I, I used the product, I loved the product, and then I started to tell other people about the product, namely my patients. And over time, they had a recurring revenue model if people bought their supplementation, their supplements. And basically, I was able to build that to where I was making um, about $12,000 a month at my peak. And so I want you all to understand that, you know, if now a lot of people have they're in business like that and they don't they don't make money. And the reason why is because they don't understand how to operate those businesses properly. I'm going to teach that in the Invincible Challenge. I'm going to teach that primarily on uh, day four. On day four, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it. I, gar I guarantee you, you will make good bank if you... But just don't come to day four because it won't give you context. Like, seriously, you guys, I like, you know, I just come to all the days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, my second question. I have my idea. Where do I go from here? Well, um, the beautiful thing is you have an idea, but an idea without implementation is nothing, right? So, um, you know, where do you go from here? I think, you know, what you have to do, there's, there's kind of a couple steps to it, right? You have to get your idea confirmed. I, I think a lot of times people start with the idea and they, instead of starting with the who, okay? Who are you serving and do they want it? Is there proof in the marketplace that they want this? Is it something that they need? One thing that you guys have to understand is this. A lot of, especially a lot of therapists, <laughs> they, they want to start something that, that no one's ever created. By the way, can you do it? You can't. But you must understand that if you create something from scratch, brand new, never been proven in the marketplace, you have to be okay in that it's going to take more time because there's absolutely no proof of concept. Okay? For, like, for instance, when I started working with healthcare professionals, with PTs, I wasn't working with traditional practice owners. By the way, I was a consultant from 2009. So from 2009, Karen, did you know this? I think you know this about me. So from 2009 to 2015, I was doing private practice consulting. Yep. Okay. All right. So like, guys, I was doing that. I was basically helping private practices how they market and how they basically get better with their organic Google. Okay. Using blogging and using SEO and whatnot. That's how I did it for my clinics. Okay. I, I was doing that, but I got to be honest with you, like 
that's cool, but like, I, I wanted to do something different. I want to do something extra. I'd already made my money. I practice already doing what I needed them to do. Okay. So when I decided I was going to go and help non-business owners in healthcare in 2015, that wasn't proven. Nobody had done that. I was working with people and serving people for free for one year. I'm talking, you guys having conversations like five to 10 conversations with people on the phone every single week for a year. You guys know what that looks like? That's like 300 to 500, 45 minutes to hour long conversation. I didn't ask anybody for any money. By the way, when I started, I got one person to sign up for my program a year after having 500 conversations. So you guys got to understand when there's no proof of concept, there is a longer ramp up time. For me, I was in a rush to make money. So if you want to make money, I'm, I'm not into the get rich quick thing, okay? I'm also not into the stay broke for everything either, okay? But can you make money quickly? You can make money faster if there's proof of concept. So you got to take your idea and say, okay, who is this serving? And do these people actually want it? Okay. And there's kind of five premises of what you need to go through. And when you could check off all of them, then you're ready to go. So we'll talk about that on day two of the Invincible Challenge. Okay. All right. Uh, Joanna, let me do this one. Uh, this has been so engaging. Interesting. Literally just signed up for your challenge. Kara's affiliate link. I hope you did VIP so Kara can get her, her points. I hope you did it. I hope, you, by the way, for those of you that do VIP, for those of you that do, listen, man, I'm trying to get Kara to win, to, to uh, win. And, okay, so what's the prize here? Let's tell, listen, what, so what's the prize? The prize is our top three affiliates get to uh, come to my, my, my uh, mountain home and do a mastermind with me, okay? All right? So if you guys really love Kara, I'm sorry, I'm pushing it, okay? If you really love her, like, get her the trip. So she can come out there and we can just grow her business and grow her mission. And you know what it's gonna do? It's gonna help you anyway. All right. So just pay the darn money and stop being a cheapskate. All right, okay. All right. You know do you what, have any advice second, for those of us? You know what bothers me yes. the most is because I was so confident. I'm like, we can easily get 500 you, people to sign up. And I do not have yeah. close to 500 people to sign up. I'm like, it's free people. But anyways, okay, keep going, answering yeah. the questions. That's more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, she's y'all, she y'all, she came, she came in so cocky. She was like, "Oh, I got it. <laughs> this is easy, <laughs> and nobody can touch me." And I knew it. I man, when 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 my assistant uh, uh, showed the new leaderboard and Carol was at the top, I was just like, "This, oh boy, oh boy, this this is gonna get messy." Y'all, she looked so sweet and innocent, but y'all, she's a she's relentless. She's a <laughs> y'all. She wants to win. <laughs> <laughs> seriously y'all sign up for her okay all right so do you have any advice for those of us trying to develop our product and flesh out ideas also do you have any insight for current trends and how they will impact the future eras of wealth i i can tell you this right now with the current trends right now it's very clear on what people want and what people want is people want ease people want results people want community um people want certainty that, like that's it here like guys here like here's the deal so why is it that people will will like barely like like i can do a free event but then i can also charge 50 to 100 thousand dollars for programs the reason why is the level of certainty okay it's a level of certainty so when you come to an event and i teach you the different stuff you're like oh my gosh wow it's my thing so cool okay but then there's other components of it because you're going to need tools. You're going to need this. You're going to need that. So you can charge based on the level of certainty. If you have the right tools to be able to do the project, you have a higher level of certainty that you're going to get the outcome. So just keep that in mind. Okay. I truly believe that we're going to stay in the era of partnerships, but I also believe we are going to transition into the era of community. I believe that if you build a community of people in whatever sector you're in, and you serve those people at a high level. I believe that that is going to be kind of, it's still with partnerships, but it's kind of moving more towards, you know, community. I think what the last couple of years have done is just tried to fracture community and people are now yearning for it. Okay. So that's that. Um, yeah. All right. Third question. Let me get this. How does a consulting agency work? A consulting agency is basically, look, it works in many different ways. Um, a con you, you being a consultant is you being able to serve people with a set of problems that they have that you've already solved and you're able to help them with those problems. You can do that one-on-one, -on -one, which I don't really like to do, 
And if I do it, I charge a lot. So for me, for my one-on-one -on -one days, it's $25,000. Um, I would rather do one-to-many. Like, do you guys find this valuable? This is, this is typically how one-to-many would look, okay? People come with their problems and I answer their problems. And you're probably hearing like, whoever asked that question, I answer that for you, but I'm sure it gave value to many other people on the call. So you end up getting questions answered that you didn't even think about for the other people. So, um, so anyways, that's basically how a consulting agency works. How, um, I don't know if you're talking about my company, um, like my staffing agency, that's different. That's virtual assistants that are basically helping other businesses with some of the work and projects that they need. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Did I answer everything? Oh, geez, we got more. Okay. Um, we see a lot of products and services uh, created by therapists for other therapists. Can you address if there's also an opportunity for the 168 vehicle that will serve our health and wellness clients? Of course. Of course. So one thing you have to, so, so for me at my clinics, when I created my first 168 vehicle, that vehicle was for my clientele when they were finishing formal therapy. And what I did is I created a 168 vehicle that was actually called Rehab to RX. So Rehab to RX was where I was getting them to do, I was, I was basically bridging the gap between CrossFit and the end of rehab. And what I was doing is I was giving them exercises that were kind of at the higher level of rehab, but I was doing it in wad formats like CrossFit. And I basically put it into an online con uh, you know, uh, 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 construct and I used the platform, at that time I used a platform called Kajabi. Today, I use my software you know, you know, platform you know, for it, okay? But basically that's what I did. And so now I had something for all of my clients to go into and it's a recurring revenue model. That's how you do it. It's a billion dollar industry for people that are in healthcare. The problem is, is that healthcare professionals are kind of, for the lack of a better term, dodo birds, and they're just letting all non-healthcare professionals do all of that. And we just missed out because we're so, we're so clingy to the way that we were taught to do it. And we spent so much money that we just don't want to do it in any other way. And so it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry of helping people after rehab. And there are so many different ways to be able to do it. And not just rehab, health and wellness as well. So many companies are killing it with that. Now, the one thing you have to understand is, again, a lot of you might be like, well, I guess it's too late. No, because people buy from people that they trust. So if you had that, you could get clientele right now if they trust you, if they trust you as an advisor. Keep that in mind. Okay, so how do you serve and then turn it into a revenue building concept? Any idea that has nothing to do with therapy? I think I kind of um, answered that. I think, I think I did. I think I did. Okay, so how do you serve into a revenue building concept? Basically, you have to get proof from people that they actually want it. That's number one. Number two is that once you get proof from them, you actually have to get someone to actually go through the process of whatever it is that you created. Number three is that once they've gone through the process of that you created, you've got to get them to actually. Um, give you feedback. You've got to be able to take that feedback from them. Okay. Number four is you got to get people now to pay for that, whether it's at a lower level or at the level you're going to charge your other clientele, but you make them, uh, you give them a much higher touch point with you. Okay. And then once you get that, all you need is one or two people. Once you get that, then you need to market that thing like a bandit. And when you market, and this is where most of you got good stuff, you just don't market. You're just so afraid. Marketing is like the plague for y'all. It's like COVID-28, okay? It's just like the worst thing ever. So like, like that's the big thing. At the end of the day, I think the majority of you probably really good at what you do, but you don't know the other skill set where people can actually see what it is that you do. And then there's some nuances of getting partnerships, this, that, da, 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 and make a lot of money. All right, okay. Um, uh, I think, okay, I think. I think I answered everything. I think at the marketing, the marketing piece, I have no business skills. None of us do. <laughs> None of us did. did. Hey, Jen, let me ask you this. Did you go into, did you go into school or did you come out of the womb and you're like, oh my God, I'm like the greatest occupational therapist of all time. No, you didn't. You went and you knew that you sucked. 
with all occupational therapy skills, but you went to school and you went through the process and you did it and you probably did it over and over and over again. And you went to your first internship. You probably looked like a dodo bird, like how I did. I, I mean, I know I did. I was terrible, terrible. But then we went back and we practiced and we practiced and we practiced and practiced. And now today you're great. Today you're great. The only problem is that you're great at the lowest level of value. You can do the same thing with your, and by the way, many of you are amazing with communication. You just go to communication in front of people. That's a patient. If you can learn how to talk to the common man, the common woman, um, and convey your message and move people with your message, um, then you basically can generate clients on demand. Do you guys know this? Do you guys think I'm good with my communication skills? Do you guys think I'm pretty good with it? Can I tell you something? I nearly didn't become a physical therapist because of my stuttering. I have a massive speech impediment. So that's why when people say that, I have no, like, Jen, I totally get you and I feel you and I've been there. But when people say, I can't, I say, you can't, you, you, you said that to the wrong guy. The one thing that I shouldn't be doing is speaking. So it's what you decide to focus your effort on. All right. Wow, we did it. Nine o'clock. All right. I'm just a couple minutes late, but hey, I'm Jamaican. I'm supposed to be late. All right. Listen, <laughs> everybody, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Sign up for the Invincible Challenge. If you guys are going to be in VIP, let me tell you a couple things. You're going to get private access to me. I think Carol's going to be one of my guest speakers at the end of the challenge. I'm going to have a private group. I have a private Voxer, I'm sorry, uh, Telegram group. You'll be in my private group here. This Sunday, I'll have a networking group. Remember, most of you are good. You just don't have enough of a network of community of people that basically can give you clients. We're gonna do that Sunday night, okay? If you're in that group, that's a platinum VIP, you'll be on something similar to this and it'll be all of us together, all right? If I don't see you in that, then I'll see you Monday night, 7 p.m. Thank you so much, Kara. Thank you to every single one of you. It's been fantastic. I gotta go. Love you guys, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a great night.